Well, a controversy has been boiling over something called critical race theory. It's been controversial enough for many states to ban it from being taught in classrooms. Some say that critical race theory is divisive, Marxist, and paints all white people as racist. Others say it's a sociological examination of how past racist attitudes in the U.S. are still having an impact present day. But what exactly is critical race theory? Well, here's an explanation. Usually when we talk about racism in everyday conversation, we're talking about racist people, someone who treats minorities badly or uses racial slurs. But critical race theory argues that racism is much more complicated than that. Instead, critical race theory looks at how racism is embedded in our laws in America and how certain policies have created a society that ranks people based on their race. If you're not understanding yet, then let's take a look at one example that's used in a lot of the research on this. Take a look at this picture about the GI Bill. After World War II, you probably heard that veterans got loans to help them buy houses when they came back home. Well, critical race theory would examine how this bill created opportunities for white veterans that were denied to black veterans. Many banks did not approve loans to black veterans. Now, some would say, okay, I see where that's unfair, but that was the 1940s, so why bring up the past? Well, critical race theory looks at how those racist policies of the past created issues that we still see today. So those white veterans who were able to use the GI Bill to purchase low-cost homes and build up wealth that was passed on to future generations of their families. And this is huge because financial experts say home ownership is one of the most effective ways to build wealth. One survey found that the average homeowner has 40 times the household wealth of a renter. So if black veterans didn't have the same opportunities to build wealth, it helps us understand in part why today, in 2021, white families have 10 times the net worth of black families. And critical race theory helps make sense of the huge racial gaps, not just in housing and economic, but also in education healthcare and mass incarceration. Now, even though many people are hearing about critical race theory for the very first time, this is not a new idea. It was developed back in the 1970s by legal scholars after they realized that racism and inequality didn't disappear when civil rights legislation was passed. Now, just recently, at least two dozen states banned critical race theory or introduced legislation to ban it from being taught in the classroom. So why now? Well, conversations about racism and inequality gained momentum after George Floyd was murdered by a Minneapolis police officer. Opponents say that critical race theory is a divisive concept. They claim that the concepts of critical race theory say that white people are inherently racist. But supporters like Kimberly Crenshaw, who's a founding critical race theorist, says the concept is being misrepresented and used as a political tool. The term has now become a blanket term for any kind of anti-racist education. She says, though, that not talking about racial disparities only allows them to continue. And it is also very important to note that critical race theory generally is not even taught in elementary or high schools. It appears more in university or postgraduate classes, very popular in law schools. 